All right, so I'm going to be doing a problem that is using Newton's method to approximate the value of a point on a graph. I have a video explaining the purpose of Newton's method that's already on my channel. So if you're not familiar with Newton's method or you just want a quick refresh before we get into this problem, go ahead and check that out. It's uh, called Newton's method, graphical basis, limitations, failures, something along those lines. So here we go. We're going to be approximating uh, using Newton's method, the, the point of f of x for this function, f of x equals x squared minus 5, and we're already given our x1, which is 2 in this case. So the first step, we're going to look for our x2, right, because we already have our x1, so we need to go ahead and find our x2. And the first step is to plug everything into the Newton's method formula, which says xi plus 1 equals xi minus f of xi over f prime of xi. So we know we're going to need f prime, so why don't we go ahead and get f prime of this original function. Well, it's not that hard. We know that if f of x equals x squared minus 5, then we're just taking x squared minus 5 prime. Now, the prime of any constant, or the derivative of any constant, is just zero, so we can ignore that, and all we need is x squared. The derivative of x squared is one of the first things you learn in calculus class, is just simply 2x. So we know that f prime of x equals 2x. So that's really easy, so we will write this over on the side as just our uh, little reminder for when we need to be plugging things into the formula. So f prime of x equals 2x. Okay, so we have that for future reference. So let's go ahead and start plugging things into the formula. xi plus 1, well, we already have xi, which just means the last x you used, okay? So xi plus 1, in this case, xi is x1, so xi plus 1 is x2. So let's go. x2 equals xi, which is x1, so the value of x1, we have it over here. Let's just make parentheses right now so that we don't have to uh, put in numbers and then, and then mess up. This will not save you time, but this will prevent mistakes. So we're just putting a parentheses in, and we know that that's where we're going to have our xi. Okay? Great. So xi minus f of xi, so the original function, x squared minus 5, over the prime, or 2 times x. Now, where I've written these parentheses, we did the exact same thing we did here. This is where our xi is going to go, okay? So our xi, as we know, is x1. So x1 equals 2. So we're going to put a 2 in each of these. All right, so let's do the quick math. This is equal to 2 minus 2 squared, which is 4, minus 5 over 2 times 2, which is 4, 2 minus negative 1 over 4, minus minus, we'll just make it a plus, okay? So 2 plus 1 quarter, so this is just 2 and 1 quarter. Now, since we're going to have to plug this, since this is our x2, we're going to have to plug it back into the original function. 2 and a quarter, this mixed number, this is kind of ugly. So let's go ahead and change this into an improper fraction. And 2 and 1 quarter is the same as, you can check me on your calculator if you want, 9 fourths. So we know our x2 is 9 fourths. So we're doing the exact same thing as we did before. Newton's method is all about repetition. So our x3 equals x plus 1. This part means our x3. xi, so we'll just have parentheses. We don't want to mess up. Minus... This fraction here, f of x, our original equation, x2 mi squared minus 5 over the derivative of that function to xi, where we're going to put the, we're going to put xi where the variable goes. So we know our xi is our x2 in this case, so 9 over 4. So we've put 9 fourths in each of those spots here. Now let's see what this is equal to. So we're continuing working on our x3. We have 9 fourths minus, all right, now let's clean up some of this junk. 9 over 4 squared, which is just 9 over 4 times 9 over 4, right? So 9 times 9, 81. 4 times 4, 16. So 81 sixteenths minus 5. 
And then on the bottom, 2 times 9 fourths, which we can just simply rewrite as 9 over 2. So now this is looking a bit cleaner. It still is kind of ugly though. So the next step, now that we have this, let's get rid of this 16. Let's multiply everything times 16, okay? So top times 16, bottom times 16. All right, so this is going to let us arrive at, still 9 over 4, we can't get rid of that, minus 16 times 81 over 16, just kills the denominator, 81. 5 times 16 minus 80, that's 5 times 16 is 80, and then 9 over 2 times 16, this is just 72. So we have this, yeah, still kind of ugly, so let's do this, let's multiply all of this, but this by 18 to give us uh, uh, a common denominator between 4 and 72, because 4 times 18 is 72. So we're going to take all of this and multiply it times 18. All right, which is going to leave us with 163 over 72 minus 1, well, 81 minus 80 is 1. Yeah, we don't really need to do that math. Minus 1 over 72, which is going to leave us with 162 over 72. This, finally, after much ado, is our x3 right here. So we now have our x3. We can write it in. Our x3 is 161 over 72. So we can see how these numbers are getting more and more precise. We've gone from just 2 down to 9 fourths to 161 over 72. We're getting more and more precise with each guess. So all of this convoluted work, really just straight, really pretty straightforward. It just looks messy, uh, is how you use Newton's method to approximate the value of x squared minus 5 with an initial x1 of 2. All right, so I do need to make a little quick addendum uh, to the end of that video. You notice that I said, hey, our x3 is 162 over 72, and then I just wrote it as 161 over 72. Well, this is actually the correct answer. This was a mistake on my part because this I should have written as being 162, and this I should have written 162 minus 1 as being 161, which gives us our final answer of x3 being 161 over 72. So uh, my mistake on my part, didn't want to refilm the entire end of that just for that one little error. So I do apologize, but yes, our x3 is 161 over 72.